Hello and welcome back to another on-demand video. Today, we're going to be diving into the platform as a whole to help you explore all of on-demand's capabilities. So without any further ado, we'll dive straight into the overview page. Upon signing in, you're greeted with this, the overview page, where immediately at first glance you have access to your credits, storage, agent calls, tokens, vectors, and transcription hours all here at the top. Moving below this, we then have our media storage, where here you can see the different file types as well as the number of files with the corresponding file type, and then finally the size of the files within this file type. So for example here you see we have our documents, we have 40 documents uploaded, and this equates to about 135.2 megabytes of storage within my account. Now if we scroll further down from here you'll see my agents, these are my personal agents that I have built and deployed into my own environment. As you can see we only have access to three here, however if we simply click view all, you'll see all of the agents that I have built and deployed into my on demand environment. So moving back into the overview page. Below my agents, you'll see my models. These are models that I have deployed either through bring your own model or bring your own inference. You can see I have 5.4 Microsoft and also DeepSeek R1 Distilled Llama 8B. Both of these are active and once again, similar to my agents, I can click view all and it brings me to my own models that I have deployed. So we'll jump straight back into the overview page. And just underneath my models, you'll see my credit grants. So when you sign it up to On Demand for the first time, you'll receive a $50 credit grant. This $50 can be used towards agent calls, storage, different models that you're deploying. It's essentially a Kickstarter, so you don't actually have to spend any money until you're ready to. So jumping over to the right, you can see our agent activity for today. So here you can see that I made three agent calls today at five o'clock. Now, if we scroll down, you can see the tokens generated. This is both input and output tokens, where here I use 6,657 tokens alongside these agent calls. Now, that covers the overview page as a whole, and now we'll quickly move into my agents. Now, we briefly touched upon this from the overview page, but just to dive a little bit further in, you can see every agent here that we have built and deployed. So you can see our knowledge base agents right here, our knowledge chat, and you can also see our REST API agents that we have also deployed right here. Scrolling further down, you'll be able to see agents that we have subscribed to, such as the LinkedIn post agent, the VEO to video agent, and email discovery agent. Now, if you're willing to create your own agent, you simply click create agent here, and you can see we have a REST API, knowledge base, and IoT MQTT agent. So taking a look at REST API, it's a very similar format for all agents. You have a simple form you need to fill in where you choose the category, provide a description, a name, and add an icon put in your conversation starters, and then here is where it gets interesting. For the REST API agents, these agents are built around an API that you find, you configure it in JSON format, and then you configure all of the paths for this agent, as well as detailed descriptions so that the AI is able to extract the information directly without any issues. So we can have a look at an example open API schema here for air quality API. You can see we just configure the different fields. Here are all the paths that we're configuring. Then we'll move on to the parameters and also the responses. Once we're satisfied, you simply provide your privacy policy. And once every other field is configured, we just simply click on deploy. Now moving over to our knowledge base agent, it's a very similar format. However, instead of adding in the code, all you do is upload a file and you're essentially querying this file directly as an agent. If you take a CSV of your company's financial data, you can simply build an agent around this so that you're able to query this document in seconds. Finally, we'll take a look at the IoT MQTT agent, where here you'll see it's also a very, very similar format. You fill in the form, you provide the code. We can look at an example right here. And it's a very similar format to that of a REST API agent. Once you're satisfied, click deploy and the agent will be available for you to use within your on-demand environment. So now we'll dive into the playground. Starting things off at the top here, you can create your new session. You can also configure your reasoning mode here. Clear your session, add in your session settings. This is where you add session context. You can see your agents here by default, the vision and media knowledge agent, but you can add in any agent of your choice, whether these are ones you've built or subscribed to right here. And if you're not subscribed to an agent that you want to use, simply click go to agent marketplace, and then you will have access to over 200 agents that have been built by the on-demand community. So now headed back to the playground, we can also then configure our preset. So here, if you've got a previously saved preset, you can select it here. 
However, if you'd like to configure a preset, you can put in your name. By default, the model endpoint now is GPT 4.1, but you can configure any of our predefined models here, as well as the models you have deployed yourself. We can then select our response mode between streaming sync and webhook. We have debug mode where we can configure this on or off, as well as our fulfillment prompt here. And then we can control our temperature, configure a stop sequence, add our max tokens, frequency penalty, and presence penalty. So now taking a look at a preset that I've already configured earlier, taking a look at a preset that I configured earlier, this is a LinkedIn image generator. You can see here we have the response mode set to streaming, debug mode set to on, the fulfillment prompt that specifies the aspect ratio of the images generated. We've turned down the temperature so the AI closer follows the prompt that we give it. We've set our max tokens to 8042 and we've left everything else the same. And if we take a look at our agents here, we're just using the imaginary image generation agent. We then provide our prompt, receive the image. And once we were satisfied, we would be able to click get code, be able to select any language. Let's do JavaScript click get code and then in any second now you'll see the code and just like that the code you need in order to export this gen ai application is immediately ready for you to use but well, the only thing you need to do here is replace your api key here with your on-demand api key now we can either copy this code we could either push it straight to github and we can even open this in vs code itself so now we'll head over to the agent flow builder here you have access to view all of your pre-existing workflows that you have built, where you can either update the details, edit the workflow, or delete it directly. Here is your workflow ID. This is the ID you'll need if you're integrating this in any external application. We can simply look at our active workflows here. I've only got the one. And then we can take a look at our inactive workflows here. But if we wanted to create an entirely new one, simply click create workflow. And here you'll see by default, we have our large language model node immediately available with the trigger set to API. We can configure this to cron. We can also then configure between a basic and advanced cron trigger. We can then select our model endpoint here. Again, we have access to the models that we have deployed ourselves through the bring your own model feature, as well as all of the predefined models that are available through on demand. We now add our fulfillment prompt, chat prompt, and also our agents. Now, What's great is our delivery points. We have Slack, Webhook, email, and phone. So taking a look at email, we could put in the email subject, and we could also put in a personal email for the end recipient to reply to. For example, if I was assembling a workflow and I wanted the recipients to be able to reply to me directly, I could put in my name and my own email address. And when the recipients click reply, it will reply directly to me and not to on demand. We could put in our recipient emails here. However, we also have the option to upload a CSV file where it will automatically detect any valid email addresses. Now we can take a look at our advanced voice mode. In order to use this, we must delete the LLM node. We can then add in our advanced voice mode, where here we can add an instruction prompt and a conversation starter. The conversation starter is used immediately when the end user picks up the call. And the only delivery point we have for this is phone, where we can put any phone number from any country code. Once again, we also have the ability to upload a CSV file where it will automatically detect any valid phone numbers. We can add in our agents here. And once again, we can set the same trigger. So now we'll move over to the web chatbot creator. If you've been looking for a way to integrate an AI powered chatbot into your website, then this is the feature for you. So here you can see a test one that I built earlier. You can see the bot ID, which is important for later, our primary color, secondary color, background color, and also our theme mode. Our actions now allow us to integrate, edit, or delete. So we can actually just create an entirely new chatbot here. You get a preview of how your chatbot will look here. You're able to add your logo directly, which will reflect right here in the upper left-hand corner. You can provide a name for your bot, Choose your theme between light, dark, and then a custom theme. Set your primary color, secondary color, and background color. You can then choose your model endpoint. Again, by default, this is GPT 4.1. You're able to choose your reasoning mode between low, medium, and high. Media upload, we don't have that yet, but it is coming soon. And then we can add in a welcome message that will start off the chat, as well as an input placeholder, such as type here. Then we added a fulfillment prompt where we're basically specifying how we want this chatbot to act. And we can also add our own agents. This would be great to add a knowledge base agent that contains all the information for your website. A good example use case with this web chatbot would be a knowledge base agent that essentially can direct your users to the appropriate locations on your site. So now we'll take a quick look at bring your own. Upon the drop down, we have models, endpoints, and inference endpoints. We'll start off with models. So you can see the models here that I've deployed myself, 5.4 Microsoft and DeepSeek R1 Distilled Llama 8B. We can deploy a model very easily. 
Well here now we can we can search directly through Hugging Face, provide the Hugging Face repo ID, or for private Hugging Face repositories, we can provide the Hugging Face repository token. We then add in a model name and then specify the context length. For a model that we select, providing that it is supported, it should immediately specify the context length for us. Like so, the Hugging Face model is supported and you can see the context length was automatically generated for us. Now we can add in a name and then simply click deploy. This will then take us immediately to configuring the endpoint where here we select the model, Llama 38B. We could then add in our input name, select our quantization mode, add in our engine arguments, specify our engine type, choose our instance type. Now immediately we'll have a recommended inference type based on the context length of the model. And then we can specify whether or not we want this to automatically scale to zero. We could set a minimum instance count and our maximum instance count, as well as optional configurations here. We can add a fulfillment prompt for the model itself. We can add in our stop tokens. We can also control the default temperature, frequency penalty, presency penalty, max tokens, and whether or not stream is supported. Once we're happy with how we've configured this, we simply click deploy and then within five minutes, the model will be available to use within your environment and you can access it in either the agent flow builder, web chatbot creator or the playground. Now taking a look at inference endpoints, similarly to how the bring your own model feature works where you find the model directly from Hugging Face. If you're already paying for inference from an external provider, then you can simply import your credentials here so you can make use of those models within the on-demand platform, allowing you to build gen AI applications with the models that you're paying for outside of on demand. And in order to access this, you'd simply click create endpoint. All you need to do here is provide the endpoint name, endpoint URL, your authentication bearer token, model ID, max context length, and then the endpoint type, which would be OpenAI compatible. You then have optional configurations here, similarly to the bring your own model, where you can specify the fulfillment prompt, stop tokens, default temperature, frequency and presence penalties, max tokens, as well as whether or not stream is supported. You then click create endpoint and instantly you'd be able to make use of this inference within on demand. Next, we'll move over to our serverless applications, where here you see we have our repository, our configuration, and our endpoints. Serverless applications allow you to build and run services without having to manage the underlying infrastructure. You can write and deploy code while we provision servers to run these applications. So we'd be able to create a repository right here. We'd provide the name, repository platform, repository visibility, as well as the URL for the repository. And if so, we could also provide an access token if this was needed, and then we could simply click add repository. For configuration, we could then create configuration here. We would then add an application name, select the repository once again, select the branch name, the Docker script path, and then select the application build mode between manual and auto build. Then we'd simply click create configuration. Finally, for serverless applications, we have our endpoints. Well, here, you'd simply create an endpoint. You'd be able to select your configuration here, then select your environment, endpoint name, copy the endpoint URL here, add in key environment variables, choose your instance type, and then set your instant counts as well. And then you'd be able to deploy this immediately. Now, taking a look at our cloud services, you can see all of our cloud services here, including speech to text, text to speech, language translation, quiz generation, and text summarization. Now let's jump into our storage, where here you have access to all of the files that you have uploaded into On Demand. You can see the file name, an ID for this file, the size of the file, the file type, and its processing status. You are now able to view this file directly or delete it in order to free up storage in your account. Now we can jump into our API key management, so here we have two different types of API keys. We have our default API keys. These are used in the playground and our agent flow builder. And then you have your IOT MQTT credentials. So jumping into API keys, you can see here, these are the ones that we have previously configured. And we can also create a new secret key here, where all we'd need to do is provide a name and then add our allowed domains. Jumping into our MQTT credentials, now here, your account is limited to one MQTT password. And what's very important to note is that once created, you are not able to view this again. So make sure that you save it somewhere secure. We can now look into our usage here. Here within usage, you get a monthly breakdown of your file types used and how many requests were made. So scrolling through, you can see for images, video, documents, and audio. Now we'll jump into our earnings. This is where you can configure your crypto wallet and then you can reap the rewards of the agents that you build. 
Once you've built these agents and deployed them, you'll be rewarded through a rev share system and here you're able to track it, you're also able to export your earnings directly into your wallet and also a good overview of all your earnings through the agents that you have built. And that is all for this on-demand overview video, covering everything from top to bottom that on-demand has to offer. Be sure to check out our individual tutorials for a deeper dive into the specific features of on-demand. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.